I have a quick question for Seventh-day Adventists. Given that this woman drew a salary from the SDA Church, was one of the founders of the SDA Church, was the lesser light leading to the greater light, quick question. Why do you follow a woman who spoke so much against the sun god, yet with intent was buried underneath the symbol of the sun god? Many critics of Ellen White have questioned why there is an obelisk on her grave. Their reason is that obelisks are associated with Freemasonry. So they believe that Ellen G. White had some connections with Freemasons. So in this video, we are going to watch a powerful presentation, in fact, a short presentation about um, the obelisk on Ellen G. White's grave. So without wasting much time, let's get right into the video. Today, we're going to have an interesting topic that was suggested by a friend of mine down in Chile. We were having a seminar this week, and the question that arose in our interview was, why is it that there is an obelisk on Ellen White's grave? Now, that shouldn't be much of a problem to most people. We see uh, obelisks on lots of graves and in different places over time, but some have suggested that that might create a problem because it might mean that Ellen White was linked together with the Masons. Well, is that a viable idea? Let's take a look at it today. Here's the White grave site in Battle Creek, Michigan. You can see here a couple of folks that are posed around it so you can get some sense of the size. And you see, uh, looking immediately back, it's marked for James White, Ellen White's husband, who died before she did in 1881. When James White died, it, it left a big gap in the leadership of the young Adventist church because he had borne such burdens, aged himself really, because he worked so very hard for the church. And people relied on him for his solid advice and guidance for the church and ideas that he used for uh, leading out in the church. So when he died at age 60, it was quite a shock to the church. Some suggested that they put up a broken shaft at his gravesite to represent this great tragedy for the denomination. But Ellen White said, no, we'll never do that. We'll never put up a broken shaft for him. That suggests part of the reason why the obelisk was decided upon. It was, it was a clean, unmarred marker that could be seen as you go into the cemetery and find their grave, grave site very easily. We might like to uh, turn the marker and, and see what it looks like on the, if we go to the side. Notice there that uh, on one side it's got James's name and on the other side it's got Ellen. But is there anything else on there besides the family name? No, there's not. But if this were a Masonic grave site, there would be some things that you would see. What you would see are some symbols like these that are classic Masonic symbols. Truth is, um, you don't find that on the tombstone for the whites. No, um, their tombstone is simple and plain. It's really hard to imagine that people could think that Ellen White was tied up with the Masons when she wrote a number of councils against linking with the Masons because there were activities that she didn't approve of. And in fact, when she was in Australia, there was an individual who was working with our institutions who was a Christian, but not totally committed. And he was probably more committed to his Masonic connections. And she had a, a vision that she was able to finally present to him and in the course of talking to him, she made certain signs that she shouldn't have known anything about inadvertently. And what he heard from her made a deep impression on him, and he decided to leave the Masons. Now, 
That would seem strange if she were engaged in Masons herself. Also, it seems odd that there's really no record, no time allowed for her to engage with this group of people. She was Her time was always occupied. So to be a participant in something that she was working against, there's no evidence on her tombstone that it actually is Masonic. It's probably best just to conclude that that was a classic marker of the time. And it was something to call simple attention to the place where she, her husband, and her sons were buried. All right, so friends, that was Pastor Kevin. And in fact, if you want to know more about Ellen G. White, and I mean more truth about Ellen G. White, you can visit his YouTube channel. I have linked it in the description. You can go ahead and check it out, okay? I think that his presentation was fair and he presented the truth about the obelisk on Ellen G. White's grave. But friends, there are some Adventists that are of the view that the obelisk should be removed from the grave of Ellen Jean White as it is associated with Freemasonry even today, All right? I don't know what you think about this, but I want to know what your thoughts are in the comments. Should the obelisk be removed from the grave of Ellen Jean White?